Matilda was a little late starting in school. Most children began primary school at five or even just before, but Matilda's parents, who weren't very concerned one way or the other about their daughter's education, had forgotten to make the proper arrangements in advance. She was five and a half when she entered school for the first time. The village school for younger children was a bleak brick building called Crunchman Hall Primary School. It had about 250 pupils, aged from 5 to just under 12 years old. The head teacher, the boss, the supreme commander of this establishment was a formidable middle-aged lady whose name was Mrs. Trunchbull. Naturally, Matilda was put into the bottom class, where there were 18 other small boys and girls about the same age as her. Their teacher was called Mrs. Honey, and she could not have been more than 23 or 24. Miss Honey was a mild and quiet person, who never raised her voice and was seldom seen to smile, but there is no doubt she possessed the rare gift for being adored by every small child under her care. She seemed to understand that totally that the bewilderment and fear that so often overwhelm young children who, for the first time in their lives, are herded into a classroom and are told to obey orders. Some curious warmth that was almost tangible shone at a Miss Honey's face whenever she spoke to a confused and homesick newcomer to the class. Miss Trunchbull, the headmistress, was something different altogether. She was the gigantic holy terror, a fierce tyrannical monster who frightened the life out of the peoples and teachers alike. There was an aura of menace about her, even at a distance, and when she came up close, she could almost feel the dangerous heat radiating from her as from a red-hot rod of metal. When she marched, while well, Miss Trunchbull never walked, she always marched. You could actually hear her snorting as she went, and if a group of children happened to be in her path, she plowed right through them as if she was a tank. With small people bounced off her to the left and right. Thank goodness we don't meet many people like her in this world. After the usual business of going through all the names of the children, Miss Honey had handed brand new exercise books to each pupil. You have all brought your own pencils, I hope. Yes, Miss Honey, they chanted. Good. Now, this is the first day of school. This, it is beginning of at least 11 long years of schooling that all of you are going to go through. And six of those years will be spent right here at Crunchman Hall, where, as you know, your headmistress is Mrs. Trunchbull. Let me for your own good tell you something about Mrs. Trunchbull. She insists upon strict discipline throughout the school, and if you take my advice, she will do your very best to behave yourselves in her presence. Never argue with her, never answer her back. Always do as she says. If you get the wrong side of Mrs. Trunchbull, she can liquidize you like a carrot on a kitchen blender. It is nothing to laugh about, Lavender. Take that grin off your face. All of you will be wise to remember that Mrs. Trenchpool deals very, very severely with anyone who gets out of line in the school. Have you got the message? Yes, Miss Honey. Cheer up 19 eager little voices. I myself, Miss Honey went on, want to help you learn as much as possible. For starters, by the end of this week, I shall expect every one of you to know the two times table by heart. And in a year's time, I hope you will know all the multiplication tables of the twelve. Now, do any of you happen to learn the two times table already? Matilda put up her hand. She was the only one. Matilda looked carefully at this tiny girl with dark hair and a round serious face sitting in the second row. Wonderful! Please stand up and recite as much of it as you can. Matilda stood up and began to sit the two times tables. When she got to twice twelve was twenty-four, she did not stop. She went right on with twice 13 is 26, twice 14 is 28, twice 15 is 36, twice 16 is 38. Stop, Miss Honey said. She'd been listening slightly spellbound to the smooth recital. How far can you go? How far? Matilda said. Well, I really don't know, Miss Honey. You're quite a long way, I think. Uh, you mean, you could tell me that you could tell me what 2 times 28 is? Yes, Miss Honey. What is it then? 56. What about something much harder, like 2 times 487? Could you tell me that? Yes. Are you sure? Why, yes, Miss Honey, I'm fairly sure. What is it, then? 2 times 487? 974, Matilda said without a moment's hesitation. That is really splendid. 
But of course, multiplying 2 is a lot easier than some of the bigger tuples. What about the other multiplication tables? Do you know any of those? Uh, I think so, Mrs. Honey. I think I do. Which ones? How far have you got? Uh, I, I don't quite know, Matilda said. I don't know what you mean. What I mean is, for instance, you know the 3 times table and the 4? Well, yes, Miss Honey. Well, how many do you know? Do you know all the way up to 12 times table? Yes, Miss Honey. What are 12 sevens? 84. Miss Honey paused and leaned back in her chair behind the plain table. She was considerably shaken by this exchange, but took care not to show it. She had never come across a 5-year-old before, or indeed a 10-year-old, who could multiply with such facility. I hope the rest of you are listening to this, she said to the class. Matilda is a very lucky girl. She has wonderful parents who have already taught her to multiply lots of numbers. Was it your mother? No, Miss Honey, it wasn't. Well, you must have a great father, then. He must be a brilliant teacher. No, Miss Honey, Matilda said quietly. My father did not teach me. You mean you taught yourself? Oh, I, I don't quite know. It's just that I don't find it very difficult to multiply one number by another. Miss Honey took a deep breath and let it out slowly. You say you don't find it difficult to multiply one number by another. Could you try to explain that a little bit? Oh dear, I'm not really sure. For instance, if I asked you to multiply 14 by 19, no, that's too difficult. It's 266. Miss Honey stared at her. Then, she picked up a pencil and quickly worked out the sum. What did you say it was? She said, looking up. 266. Miss Honey put down her pencil and removed her spectacles. Now try to tell me, Matilda. Try to tell me exactly what goes on in your head. Uh, I, I simply put down the 14 in my head and multiply it by 19. I'm afraid I don't know how else to explain it. I've always said to myself that if a little pocket calculator can do it, why shouldn't I? How right you are. Pocket calculators are not allowed in the school anyway. Miss Sunny was feeling quite quivery. There was no doubt in her mind that she had met a truly extraordinary mathematical brain, and words like child genius and prodigy went flitting through her head. She knew that from these sorts of wonders do pop up in the world from time to time, but only once or twice a hundred years. After all, Mozart was only five when he started composing for the piano, and look what happened to him. It's not fair, Lavender said. How can she do it and we can't? Don't worry, Lavender, you still can't chop, Miss Honey said, lying through her teeth. Well, let us leave sums for the moment and see if any of you have begun to learn to spell. Hands up if anyone can spell cat. Three hands went up. They, begun, they belonged to Lavender, a small boy called Miguel, and to Matilda. Spell cat, Miguel. Miguel spelled it C-A-T. Now, I wonder, she said, whether any of you three who know how to spell cat have learned how to read a whole group of words when they are strung together. Which was actually a question that she would not have dreamed of asking the first day of school. I have, N Nigel said, so have I, Lavender said. Miss Honey went to the blackboard and wrote with the right chalk. I have already begun to learn how to read long sentences. She had purposely made it difficult, and she knew that there were precious few five-year-olds around who would be able to manage it. Can you tell me what that says, Nigel? That's too hard, Nigel said. Lavender? The first word is I, Lavender said. Can any of you read the sentence? Miss Honey said, waiting for the yes that she felt certain was going to come from Matilda. Yes, Matilda said. Matilda read the sentence without a moment's hesitation. That really is good. How much can you read? I think I can read most things, although I'm afraid I can't always understand the meanings. See if you can read this one out loud. There's, a, This is a book of humorous poetry. Smoothly, without a pause and at a nice speed, Matilda began to read. An epicure dining at crew found a rather large mouse in his stew. Cried the waiter, don't shout and wave it about, or the rest will be wanting one too. Several children f saw the funny side of the rhyme and laughed. But Miss Honey said, Do you know what an epicure is, M Matilda? It is someone who is dating with his eating, Matilda said. 
Correct, Miss Honey said. And do you happen to know what that particular type of poetry, poetry is? It's a limerick. That's a lovely one. It's so funny. It's a famous one, too. A witty limerick is actually very hard to write. They look so easy, but they are most certainly not. I know. I've tried quite a few times, but not mine are ever any good. You have, haven't you? Matilda, Miss Honey said, more startled than ever. Well, Matilda, I would like very much to hear one of these limericks you say you have written. Could you try remembering one for us, please? Well, Matilda said, hesitating, I've actually been trying to make one up about you while we've been sitting out here. About me? Well, we've certainly got to hear that one, haven't we? I don't think I want to say it, Miss Honey. I promise I won't mind. I think you will, Miss Honey, because I have to use your first name to make things rhyme, and that's why I don't want to say it. How do you know my first name? Miss Honey asked. I heard another teacher calling you by it just before we came in. She called you Jenny. I insist upon hearing this limerick, Miss Honey said, smiling one of her rare smiles. Stand up and recite it, please. Reluctantly, Matilda stood up and very, very slowly, very nervously, she recited her limerick. The thing we can all ask about Jenny is surely that there cannot be many young girls in the place with such a lovely face. The answer to that is not any. The whole of Mrs. Honey's pale and pleasant face blushed a brilliant scarlet. Then, once again, she smiled. It was a much broader one this time. Why, thank you, Matilda. Although it is, it is not true, it is a very good limerick. Oh dear, oh dear, I must try to remember that one. It's good. I like it. It's true as well, a small boy said, Rupert said. Of course it's true, Nigel said. Already the whole class had begun to warm towards Miss Honey, although as yet she had hardly taken any notice of any of them except for Matilda. Who taught you how to read? I have just sort of taught myself, Miss Honey. And have you read any books all about yourself? Any children's books, I mean? I read all the ones that are in the public library on the high street, Miss Honey. And did you like them? I like some of them, but others were fairly dull. Tell me the one that you liked. I like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I think Mr. C.S. Lewis is a very good writer, but he has one failing. There are no funny bits in his books. You're right there. There aren't many funny bits in Mr. Tolkien either. Do you think all children's books ought to have funny bits in them? I do. Children are not so serious as grown-ups, and they love to laugh. Miss Honey was astounded by the wisdom of this child. And what are you going to do now? I'm reading other books. What other books? I am very fond of Charles Dickens. He makes me laugh a lot, especially Mr. Pickwick. At that moment, the bell in the corridor sounded for the end of class.